welcome back to the Independent Thinking Online Children's Book Festival that we've been running, speaking to authors from all over the place with all sorts of books, books for children, books about children, uh, books to help children, books to help parents, books that even though they help, they're there to help parents, have got a lot to say to, to teachers. And, and I've been in a really privileged position of getting to speak to so many great authors uh, in these little 20 minute sessions. Um, and one of the things that, I, that really interests me about the books is the story within the story, the backstory, how the how the authors came to be writing the books, what is the message that's being delivered through these little story books. Um, and, and this is a good example. What's Wrong Artie by Linda Beckett is another lovely little story, little, a little, as you can see, a picture book uh, for children, but there is more to it than just a picture book for children. So I'm, I'm here with Linda, I'm here with the author. Thank you for joining us, Linda. Uh, just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, what you do, what you're up to, and how you came to be writing a book uh, that's called What's Wrong Artie? Yeah, thanks very much Ian for, for having me. Um, yes, like you say, there is always a backstory and I have got quite an, an interesting one. Um, I suppose I became a, an author quite uh, sort of late, late in life, so it evolved over the over years. But um, yeah, my name is Linda Beckett and um, I live in North Hampshire. Um, I'm married with two, two grown up sons and I've got one grandchild as well who's uh, tried out my my books he's uh, 16 months but uh, he can make his views known in his own little way um so uh, yeah my first book uh, what's wrong arty released in 2018 so um quite new compared to a lot of lot of other authors in the group um so i've been on quite a journey so when my when my boys were small um i used to volunteer um in schools and primary used to be primary and infants um, I used to go in, I used to help them with the reading and get lots of enjoyment from that. Um, I also used to help them with the cooking, which for some reason mums didn't want to do that, but I really loved it. And, and so did they. So they, they got really excited. So I enjoyed that. Um, so I sort of spent quite a time in schools. I went on, I did a bit of dinner lady in because it fitted in with, with them being at school. Um, and I also went on to do teaching assistant in a secondary school. So I had quite a few a number of years um it's in schools and enjoyed that so um while my boys were, were growing up um I, just, I was quite interested to do some studying i quite like learning about new things so um, i wanted to do a course um, with the open university and i'd seen at the time there was quite a few adverts every now and again and i was quite intrigued by it and i thought oh when i get a chance i'll, I'll do that so um I thought what I'd do is um, apparently some universities that you can go along to and you can see the course so you can actually go and read the course material to see if it's right for you which I thought was really a good idea because some of these courses can can be quite expensive so I went along to my local um, university which is in Reading and um, had a look at the course material and thought yeah I'd quite like to do that so um, basically I, I hadn't studied for quite a long time um, so um, when you haven't you have to do a foundation course before you start um, sort of any sort of serious studying and I thought well I'll, I'll just go on with the angle of you know hopefully I'll, I'll just enjoy it hopefully I'll pass but it's not the end of the world if I, if I hadn't so you had to do foundation and say you had to pick, um, you had to um, several subjects, sociology, psychology, um, geography, economics and politics. So I had to do a bit bit of everything, which was quite good, good for me. Um, so I did pass the first year, fortunately. Um, and I thought, oh, what shall I do now? I need to pick a, pick a subject. And it was a toss up between sort of law and psychology. And uh, I thought, well, I'm quite interested in the, the psychology bit. So um, I had to do a further five years. Wow. So, um, so what happened was you studied for nine months, then you had the exam at the end, and then you had perhaps two and a half months rest, and then you'd start again. Um, so, yeah, it was, quite, it was quite tough. There was four years of the sort of psychology subjects. The last two years were being equivalent to the last two years of university. And, in fact, what was really good is I got to stay in a university studying properly and where you have um, the students at the uni that would take six weeks to complete a course, this one was all crammed into one week. Wow. So it was quite intensive, but you did the course that the students did, yeah. 
which was quite useful for when my my sons went to university. Um, I kind of knew because I went to Nottingham, I went to Sussex, I went to Bath, and sort of got a bit of the sort of university life. So I knew what to expect when when they both went. Yeah. So that was that was that was really good. Um, so um, and also the so I did four years of the psychology courses, and the last year I spent um, looking at. Um, children, in, um, how they lived in different cultures uh, and how, how they were affected um, all over the world. So that was really, really interesting. Um, so I completed that degree. Um, this was way back in 2004. And that's why I say I've had a bit of a bit of a journey. Um, so but I did have a wonderful graduation um, ceremony. Um, and uh, that was at the Royal Festival Hall. And that was presented by Betty Boothroyd, who of obviously former the um, uh, Speaker of the House okay. of Commons. Um, so I got that. And then I thought, well, now I've got that. I wasn't planning on getting that because I, I didn't know I was going to do that because, you know, you complete one year and then you carry on, and you finish. And I thought, well, maybe um, I could use it to, to help people. So the next thing I did, whilst still working kind of in, in the background, um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll go on assistant psychology um, course. Obviously, you had to pay for that. And I went up to Manchester for that. Um, and it was an intensive, um, like, weeks course. And it was in a clinic setting because I had to kind of get used to, if I was going to help people, I had to kind of get used to talking with people. Um, basically, I did uh, help them with IQ tests. I did IQ tests. So that was interesting. And um, I also got to interview a man um, who'd just been released from prison, um, having been charged um, with child sexual abuse, would you believe? Mm. So you're kind of thrown into all these different scenarios. Mm. And to interview him with a colleague of mine, it was in a room called a lockup. So you had, you had cameras and you had the panic button. Um, so you were literally thrown in the, in the deep end, I suppose. But, um, the idea with that, they said, um, was to ascertain if he took a part of any guilt, if he could see what he'd done wrong after having um, taken that time. And so what we found was that he came out with a, a certain story and we felt that he told that story over and over again. So by the time he'd come out of prison, he had that ready-made story um, and it turned out that when we spoke to the lead social worker afterwards, that wasn't it at all. Mm. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't actually what what took place because he was saying that she was seventeen and he met her down the pub and that's how he knew her. Whereas in fact she was really fifteen and their babysitter, his yeah. family babysitter. Okay. I gave you an insight into minds, brains. Brains working differently. He does. So yeah. I think they had a lot of work to do on him. So unfortunately, I didn't see how that, yeah. that <laughs> maybe I'll have to contact them yeah. and see. But um, yeah, so that was quite, it was, you know, you know, very much an eye opener. Yeah. There. So, so where does Artie fit in then? Where does, where does Artie fit in with all of this background? It's really inspiring how you talk about, you know, what, what you've done and how you've just gone relentlessly from one qualification to another learning developing your brain and everything it's really inspiring so where does Artie fit in yeah I mean Artie Artie fitted in much um, many more years down the line to be honest because although um, that that qualification enabled me to become a member of the British Psychological Society which is actually in my front copy um, sort of how I got that's how I got that qualification wow yeah so that's the kind of background to that. But as far as Artie goes, um, many years down the line, I mean, I tried to actually get a job within that industry. Cut a long story short, didn't, couldn't actually do it. Mm -hmm. And the situation um, at the time is that I needed to go out to work. And unfortunately, I ended up doing finance admin, which is just totally boring. Yes. But anyway, with Artie, um, I was shocked to learn that children of primary school age were now suffering with mental health issues. And I just wanted to do something to help. 
Mm. And I wondered if, because um, my, my father used to tell me stories about woodland animals as a child. And I think things like that always stay with you. Um, so I thought, I wonder whether I could build a story um, in my head. I mean, I had a few ideas in my head and um, I actually wrote this book. Uh, it took me six weeks in my lunch hour <laughs> because I think the story was mainly up in my head. Um, so that's how I had the idea of him. So I thought well, it was a story and I needed to sort of find um, a larger than life character. Mm. I thought, well, I've always liked bears. Um, so Artie the bear was was created and I just built the characters around him. Um, some of them are named after people that I, I know <laughs> <laughs> as well. But um, yeah. that's why I thought, well, it's a three pronged thing because there's so many ways, in fact, that's evolved as well, how different people use this book. Yeah. Parents, teachers, therapists, even uh, foster care agencies. Um, in fact, I had a lovely, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, um, from the book review, yeah. Beautiful review from Foster Line. Oh, okay, nice. And um, they actually said, um, I recently read this story to my sister's three young foster children, aged three, six and seven. And the six and seven year old were very keen and able to discuss and reflect upon the message of the story. They compared it to a recent event that had caused them sadness until sharing the problem with their foster carer. The three year old simply loved the beautiful illustrations and was delighted to learn that Artie felt soothed and happy once his friends had helped him to solve his problems. This book is a valuable tool for foster carers. It cleverly engages children, allows them to reflect upon their feelings, encouraging them to share their problems and to find positive resolutions. So, I mean, I was really quite touched. Yes, lovely. Yeah. So, you know, how many children go to school that are fostered, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I have another one with um, an educational psychologist. Yeah. So if you have children from the school, maybe that um, are referred to an educational psychologist. Um, what a wonderful find. Linda's descriptions create the most beautiful imagery, making it very appealing for little ones. She cleverly engages children with the story, laying the foundations for the develop development of empathy and introspection and encouraging them to speak out and ask for help when they need it. This book is definitely going to be a very valuable tool in my practice for years to come. So basically parents, teachers, therapists for yeah. the school, teachers could um, have the subject, read the book and then have a discussion on how we're feeling today. And it could evolve from there. So almost any topic really. You know. yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 at one level, it's, it's such a simple little book. Yeah. Big, yeah. big bear, and I can get bears because they're like they're 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 like they're big and strong. But there's a vulnerability about bears as well, isn't there? The way they're portrayed in these things, especially yeah. on the cover. That's a that's a vulnerable big 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 bear. That one is. So you've got this <laughs> simple book written in lovely language with, and the images are like something out of a out of an animated cartoon. They're like something out of Disney. They're so yeah. bright. Um, but then you've got you've got all your years and years and years of of, of um, learning and training and experience in all sorts of aspects of life, in, including you know the, the the financial admin that you're doing as well, the understanding you know, just life if you like, yeah. and that's all sort of embedded in between the lines and in the pictures in a way that you you don't you, you wouldn't know that was all there, but it clearly is there because that's what allows the, the Ed Sykes and the, and the looked after children, people working with looked after children to, yeah. to be able to use it so forcefully. It's, it's great, it really is. What, give, us a, give us a little extract then. I think you're gonna read a little bit. Okay. Uh, and feel yeah. free to, to hold it up because it, it does appear the right way around, even though it might look back to front view, but it, it is the right way around oh. to the audience yeah. there. So <laughs> the pictures as well. Okay. Give us a little taste of it. Okay, right. Scratch, scratch, scratch. A large hairy paw shot up into the air. One giant claw appeared and with it Artie scratched his head. This is a story about Arthur, a large brown bear with cute little ears, a jet black nose and an enormous bottom. He was known to his friends as Artie. Artie sat down on a tree trunk. His shoulders sagged, 
and his head was bowed low. All was not well in Bouncy Wood today. A blue bottle settled on his nose and he swept it away with his lollipin paw. He could be heard growling and muttering to himself. This way, there we go. Ah, yeah, there he is, swapping the butterfly away. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think Arcee is feeling today? Suki Squirrel was scurrying backwards and forwards, gathering her nuts, almost too busy to notice her friend Artie sitting on the tree trunk nearby. She had a big red bow on the top of her head. I think they've done me proud with the um, illustrations, actually. A bit more this way to the camera. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so vivid and bright, like I so said, like an anime, like a still from an animation, like something from that's Snow White. That's it. So, um, swish, swish, swish went her lovely big bushy towel as she approached. She jumped up on the tree trunk next to him. What's wrong, Artie? She said. Artie just shook his head. Thank you, Suki, but I don't want to talk about it, he said. Okay, said Suki Squirrel, and went on her way. Swish, swish, swish. Later that day, while Suki was gathering some berries, she heard the sound of scratching and little mounds of earth started to form in front of her. Suki stared at the ground in amazement. From a tiny hole in the ground, up popped a cheeky-faced grey rabbit with big floppy ears and a white bobtail. Up a bit, up, to, up a bit, there we go. Yeah, lovely. It was her friend, Robbo Rabbit, and he had been busy making his new burrow. Twitch, twitch, twitch. His whiskers were very long and they twitched almost as fast as a propeller on an aeroplane. Hello, Suki, he said. I am worried about Artie, said Suki. He does not feel like talking today. What do you think we should do? Robbo Rabbit's whiskers were still twitching at a fast rate. Thump, thump, thump. His large, he thumped his large rabbit foot onto the ground several times. He was thinking about what he could do. He decided it would be a good idea to visit Artie himself to see if he could help. Yep. Yep, lovely. Robbo found Artie still sitting on his tree trunk. What's wrong, Artie, said Robbo. Once again, Artie just shook his head and did not want to talk. So Robbo hopped off to find Suki. Yeah. Suki Squirrel and Robbo Rabbit went to visit their friend Ozzy the Owl. Ozzy was sitting on his favourite branch having a nap, but he always had one eye open. We are worried about Artie. Will you speak with him, said Robbo and Suki. Yes, of course I will, said Ozzy. He was a wise old owl who always knew what to do. So perhaps we ought to wait and see what he... Yeah, let's... let's, let's, <laughs> let's leave, him, leave him in suspense on that. Yeah. Yeah, what the owl knows what to do. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think I read it as well as um, Sarah Ferguson, because I, I had her... She picked my book on her channel. Oh, yeah? I'm at with Fergie and Friends on Instagram. Oh, how nice. So she read it, did she? Yeah. That's special, isn't it? Reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, um, the, the, it's, a, it's a story about friendship as much as anything, isn't it? So Art is clearly something's troubling him and he's not himself. Yes. And it's not about just pulling himself together. It's how the friends all sort of rally round and, and persistently, you know, we don't know what to do, let's go to somebody else. Or they don't know what to do, let's go to somebody else. So they're constantly... Yes. Doing something until they address the problem. We'll, we'll, the, the, the reader will have to find out later, but they'll, they, they, they do it and they address the problem. So it is, it's about empathy and understanding and friendship and problem solving and care and love, as well as um, mm -hmm. the arty understands that when you, when things aren't right, that it's, one, it's okay to be not okay. Yes. And, and secondly, that, that actually talking about it is okay. Yeah. The things that are in your head sometimes yeah. aren't, aren't once you talked about it aren't actually as bad as you as you think they're going to be so this like i said it's a simple little story but there's so much that you've built into it with your with your understanding with your wisdom with your education with your learning with your your knowledge of of, of psychology all starting from that point of view i'm, I'm going to go to over university what shall i do it yes. could have been a whole could have been a book about the law couldn't it about the legal system you, yeah. you had that choice <laughs> all those years ago that's it 
so, so you've you got other sorry have you got other books in in line linda um i've got uh, one other that that's already published um it's this one which actually my grandson bring it loved. this way keep, keep moving across there we go caught in the web okay is that arty again that's arty arty the bear and friends yeah um so it's about it's a subtle warning um about the dangers of the internet uh yeah so what you did there with the web and the computer yeah yeah so um it's it's kind of a, a trip with arty the bear and his family and they want to go and see the traveling theater show right um so i kind of wrote it in a way that wouldn't be frightening for young children it is it is a nice little little story and this is eventual when he goes to see the traveling theater show mm -hmm. and you see baz the rabbit with his parrot squawk and so it's quite a nice, like, gentle little story. And one evening, he logs on to Twitcher, <laughs> see. And, <laughs> and he, meet, he sees on the screen this lovely, snowy uh, bunny rabbit. Yeah. And she wants to meet him, you see. So he does go along to, to meet her, but things are not what they seem. So it's a very, so if, if you want to talk, sort of start at a young age, and it's the same with What's Wrong Artie, you yeah. start at a Paging and encourage them to talk about things that that trouble them. Yeah. If they can get make it the norm that they do talk when things are troubling them. And the same with with the internet. It's all you know. Just be uh, be aware of who you're talking to. Things are not always what what they seem. Just be careful. It just lodges just a little message yeah. Yeah. in there, but for the youngsters. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. So talking to Twitcher, Twinder. Yes. Um, social media. Um, so how, can, how can people? <laughs> how can people get hold of you? How can they? I think that the the book might well be available through our friends at the Roving Bookshop, uh, but also your publisher as well. So tell us how people can get hold of you and hold of the book, and and where they find you on social media, Lynn. Yes. So you can find me um, at Amazon. You literally punch my name in, and um, it will it will literally come straight up. So fame at fame at last, at least on that. <laughs> Um, you can find me um, on Twitter um, and Facebook at L Beckett Books and uh, Instagram um, at Artie, Artie the Bear and Friends. Right. OK. And do you have a website yet? Have you got as far as that? Um, I've got an author website, which yeah. is on Austin McCauley. So if you go on Austin McCauley and then put my name in, then my details will, will come up and the book can be bought uh, through there. Yeah. Um, but I am in the process of doing my own website I'm actually looking into that now because I think I can do so much more and I could have um, lots of information about mental health and internet safety for children and sort of yeah. build evolve, evolve that way that would be nice and the reviews and things that you get you can put them on there as well can't you because they're so they're yeah. such powerful recommendations of, of your book so no that's yes. thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for your time thank you for sharing Artie thank you for writing Artie Thank you for bringing your expertise into schools and, and other, other clinical settings, other settings as well. Um, and uh, yeah, good, good luck with all of that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye.